It's been about six months now since I purchased the M1 MacBook Pro, and as a lifelong Windows user, I purchased this just to review it. I never thought that I would actually keep it, but after using it for a month or two, I kind of fell in love with it as a laptop. The hardware itself is incredible, and I got kind of used to Mac OS, and I thought, you know what, I'll keep this as a laptop, but I'm definitely not going to be getting rid of my Windows desktop anytime soon. But over the last few months, I found myself reaching for this laptop again and again. And in many cases, when I had an option to work on a Windows PC, I just kind of grabbed the laptop instead. For the last two months, I've had my new desk built over here. I've set up my Windows PC, and I think only twice have I turned it on. For the last two months, almost exclusively, I've had this laptop in clamshell mode, plugged into a hub that's plugged into dual 4K monitors, and I've been using this as a desktop replacement, and I have hardly missed my Windows computer at all. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm starting to fall in love with this computer. Let's talk about it. Now, for the majority of my life, I've been a Windows desktop type of guy. I love the idea of laptops. I wish that a laptop could be just as powerful as a desktop, but every time I've used laptops in the past, they work fine for small programs and everything, but when you really start bogging them down and connecting them to multiple peripherals, including multiple monitors, it starts to feel like a laptop. So in the past, I've spent ridiculous money on ridiculous laptops like Alienware laptops that look like they were designed by 15-year-old boys that are super thick, heavy plastic that have ridiculous colored lights all over them to try to get that desktop experience in a smaller form factor. And the problem that I've had with those computers is that one, they still can't hang with desktops, but two, the fans get so insanely loud that I don't even wanna be in the same room with them when they're spooling up. Now, I've been building Windows desktops for a while now, and when I was in college, I loved big desktop machines with all the colored lights and all the fans and everything, but I'm an adult now, and I don't want a gigantic, loud, energy-sucking machine next to my desk. I would much rather have a small, quiet machine. I just assumed that you had to have a giant computer to get the performance you wanted. This laptop has opened my eyes a bit. This is the first laptop I have ever used that truly feels like it could be a desktop replacement. And this is just the pro version. This isn't the max version either. When I plug this computer into the hub and everything on my desk, including dual monitors, boots right up, and I start using the computer, it feels like I'm on a desktop. I, I forget at times that I am plugged into such a thin, small machine. Now let's start with the obvious things that are great about this laptop that everybody already knows. Hardware-wise, this laptop destroys every other laptop I've ever tried before. The keyboard feels incredible. The mouse pad, there's no comparison. It's a pleasure to use. The scrolling, the way it clicks, it feels fantastic. The speakers on this thing are amazing. Honestly, I think this is the first laptop I've ever used that I actually enjoy listening to the audio in the built-in speakers. The screen is amazing. The high refresh rate is amazing. The notch at the top, honestly, hasn't really bothered me at all. Apple's also brought back some of the ports, the HDMI port, which I have used all the time, the SD card slot, which I use all the time, and I feel like Thunderbolt has finally started to work for me. I mean, I've complained about Thunderbolt ports on Mac computers and Windows computers for years now. They just haven't been reliable for me, and they haven't been completely reliable for me with this system either, but it's like 95% better than it has been for me. I love the idea of having a single cable that can kind of do it all, and for the most part, it has worked with this computer. And although it doesn't work 100% of the time, sometimes I do have to unplug it and plug it back in, it does work like 90, 95% of the time, which Honestly, I'm very impressed by it. Now, when I moved from Windows over to Mac OS, there were definitely some annoyances with this software, and we're gonna talk about those problems a little bit later on in this video. But as I got used to the way things work, I also started to appreciate some of the things that Mac OS can do that Windows can't. Probably the two biggest things are the ability to airdrop files from my phone or my iPad over to my laptop without having to plug in, oh my gosh, for, all you Windows users out there, you know how annoying it can be just to get an image or a video clip off of your iPhone. 
It is a nightmare. And then the other thing that I never thought I would appreciate, but I absolutely love, is the ability to chat on iMessage on my laptop. I have become addicted to texting people back through my computer versus picking up my phone 100 times during the day. And so when I go back to Windows now, I'm always trying to find iMessage and I'm like, oh yeah, wrong computer. Now something that's super annoying is that iMessage can only send and receive iMessages. So basically other messages from laptops like this or other iPhones. So if your friend is on Android, you're not going to be able to see it on your laptop. Or something that's super annoying to me is I'm always trying to like log into bank accounts or these accounts that want to send me codes to my cell phone. And I want to be able to get that code and I just want to copy it and paste it onto that website that I'm on. But none of those will show up in the iMessage app because of course those aren't sent from an iPhone. So I have to pick up my phone and I have to read the number and then I have to type it in. It's not a huge deal, but I just feel like it's so close to being perfect. If I could just respond to all text messages on my laptop, that would be my dream. But I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if they're gonna do that anytime soon. I've talked a lot about what I love about this computer, but there are a few things that I hate and a few things that I think Windows still does much better. My biggest complaint has to be the dock. I've talked about this before. I think the dock is horribly designed. Uh, the fact that they just put these icons along the bottom and then if the application is open, there's just a dot down at the bottom. It makes it incredibly difficult to find what you're looking for, especially if you download a new application and you don't know what the icon of that new application is. Um, I, I just think it's a horrible system. Windows system is much better where it's an icon until you click it and then when you click it, it expands and it will actually write what the program is. And then if you have multiple monitors and you drag that application to another monitor, that icon that's on the bottom of the start bar at the bottom will move to the other monitor so that you can see exactly what is open on each one of your monitors. On Mac OS, you literally just have one of these little docks down at the bottom on your main screen, and then using mission control to try to find things by making everything open on your computer randomly become little icons on a desktop. It's just crazy. I don't think it's a good way to do things at all, um, and I think that Apple could make this so much better. And then there's just strange little quirks with the software that just never seem to end. Like if you double click on the top of some application windows, it will expand to full screen. But if you do it with the finder window, it just resizes it to some weird shape. Or if you try to screen record with QuickTime, it will record your voice, but it won't record the audio from anything on the computer. For example, if you were playing a video, it won't record that. So you have to do some ridiculous hack to make it work. And it just seems so crazy to me. I mean, Apple does such a great job with many of their applications to make them simple and easy to use. Why wouldn't it just be a checkbox to record computer audio to second channel? So I am currently copying a bunch of files from an SSD over to my server. And I can tell it's transferring. I can look up here at my iStat application and see that it's transferring. But the little pop-up window that shows you that it's transferring just isn't here. This happens all the time for me. And I can hit this button to kind of show all windows. And you can see that it's just not there. But I can make it appear, like if I grab this, and let's say I just grab one of these, and I paste it again, then it will come up. Gaming on this computer is definitely limited. Uh, most of the games that I own on Steam do not currently work on this computer. Uh, one of the games that I play, StarCraft, does currently work on the computer, and it plays smoothly, but of course that game is very old. I personally thought that would really bother me, um, but I don't really like gaming on a PC that much anymore. I just find that opening up the application is so slow, and then if you leave it on for a while, the game will start lagging, you have to reset the game and everything. So I've kind of moved over to console gaming just because the consoles are always on and you can instantly start up the game, play for two or three minutes, and then cut it off, and it's just ready at all times. So for me personally, it hasn't been that big of a deal moving over to Mac OS because I just don't really game on a computer anymore. But if you are a big gamer, it's gonna be a downgrade.
Now, there are aspects to the file system in Mac OS that I find far more intuitive than Windows. And one thing that I love are the tabs within the Finder. You can add multiple tabs like you do with multiple web browsers and Chrome, and it just makes opening up multiple folders at the same time much easier. One thing I find very frustrating about the file system within Mac OS is that it makes it very difficult to quickly zip over to different folders and subfolders. On Windows, no matter what folder you're in, you can see the path of all of the subfolders that you're in, and you can easily copy that path and paste it into another window, or you could paste it into an application so that you're not having to click C Drive, Program, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop to find the folder that you wanna save something at. But it seems like with Mac OS, every time you want to save a file, it feels like they want you to have to start from the very beginning and if I click on Save As here, they want me to click on Documents, and then Adobe, and then over here, and then I have to just do this every single time. They don't give you anywhere to paste the path of the folder that we want to save this on, and it slows things down so much. In some applications, I can hit Command-Shift-G, and you can see here it does bring up the path name, and then I can paste this here and it will zip me over to this, but this only works in some applications, and it seems crazy to me you'd have to memorize that crazy shortcut to use this feature, which I personally use like hundreds of times a day. I'm constantly copying and pasting folder path names that I'm in, but again, most Mac people, I guess, just don't do that, and to them, they're just used to clicking on folder after subfolder after subfolder and finding the folder that they actually wanna save something in. That just drives me crazy. Now, I have been editing photos and videos almost exclusively for the last six months on this laptop. And when it comes to photos, I'm not sure I have been able to feel any slowdown at all. Photoshop feels super snappy, Lightroom, super snappy. Now, when it comes to Adobe Premiere, I'm getting mixed results. Normally, Adobe Premiere exports really quickly, but every once in a while, I'll export a file and it'll go really slow. This is an hour long video. It says it's gonna take five hours. I don't know if it's because it's picture in picture, but every now and again, I'll get a file that the computer just struggles to export. Now it says it's going to take 14 and a half hours. Now I'm connected to my Windows machine, and as you can see, it says it's going to do the entire hour video in 30 minutes. So I, this is very rare. Uh, it's only happened a couple of times, but this computer has no problem with this file, but the MacBook literally can't do it. It ended up freezing after like six hours. I cannot edit at 2x speed, like I like editing, with my 4K 8-bit files on this laptop without making proxies first. To be honest, even on my Windows desktop computer, which has like top of the line components, I still struggle to do that as well. So I just got in the habit of making proxies on my Windows machine, and then of course I feel like I have to have proxies on this machine as well. The problem is that when I'm editing at 2x speed and I hit stop, spacebar to stop, sometimes the video freezes and audio will continue to play for like 10 or 15 seconds. This happens on my desktop computer too occasionally, but it's usually not 10 or 15 seconds. And oh my gosh, it is infuriating. The whole application kind of freezes up for 15 seconds. You have to wait for it to catch back up, everything finally stops, and then you can start editing again. Now, that being said, when I create those proxy files, editing on this laptop versus my desktop feels identical to me. Now, I have had one other problem, and that's when the application is left open for a while, there will be like a half second delay between when I click and when the application registers that I'm clicking. And it is also really infuriating and it makes editing very difficult. And to fix it, what I have to do is close out the application and reopen it. You know, that probably takes less than 60 seconds and it works fine after that. But it is super annoying that I have to do that and I did not have to do that on my Windows computer. It seems like Adobe needs to step up their game a little bit and work on their software to get it as good as Final Cut Pro. Up until buying this laptop, I thought that any photographer or videographer whose main machine was a laptop was out of their mind. I thought they just didn't realize what they were missing and there was no way that a laptop could truly compete with any desktop. This computer has completely changed my mind. For the first time ever, it feels like there is one computer that I could own 
that really can do everything. I can plug it in when I'm at my desk to multiple monitors and use it as a desktop replacement. But then I have the convenience of being able to take it with me and having all of my files with me wherever I am. No, it's not quite as powerful as my spec'd out desktop over there, but it feels like it's 90% of the way there, but it's also 90% smaller and more convenient. Now that laptops are this good, I'm not sure what type of person really needs a desktop these days anyway. And I don't even know if I could recommend an all-in-one computer like an iMac because you're giving up the convenience of being able to take this with you wherever you go. Even the new Mac Studio is super small and convenient, but it's not this small and it's not this convenient. And yes, it's much more powerful than this laptop, but it gets to a certain point where I'm not sure the average person can even tell. I mean, what type of processing are you guys doing on a daily basis? I'm doing pretty hardcore video editing and this laptop in most cases feels just like my desktop computer. At a certain point, the computer gets fast enough to do whatever you need it to do. And at least for what I do, this laptop is there. I never thought that I would be the person to say this, but I highly recommend this computer. I have really fallen in love with it. I don't love Mac OS, but I've gotten to learn to understand it. I can live with it now. And uh, there's aspects of it that I really like. I mean, the ability to send text messages and sync everything with my phone and be able to airdrop stuff. It's really, really convenient. If you're like me and you're a Windows user, but you've been eyeing this laptop, you've been thinking about giving it a try, definitely give it a try. Apple has a two week return policy, I think. So you don't have to worry about that. If you don't like it, you can return it. But if you put in the time, give it a few days, maybe a week or two, I think you'll find like me that in many cases, you're not really dealing with the operating system that much anyway. You're kind of dealing with the same applications day in and day out. And if you're used to using Photoshop on Windows, using Photoshop on a Mac is identical. Well guys, thank you for watching. If you're interested in photography or videography, head over to fstoppers.com for daily free content. We also have tutorials that we sell on very detailed genres of photography. So if you're looking to go pro, maybe you wanna be a headshot photographer, a wedding photographer, or an architectural photographer, or a landscape photographer, we have detailed tutorials at fstoppers.com slash store. Check those out. And guys, I try not to ask this all the time because I know it's super annoying, but if you appreciate this video, would you mind subscribing and liking this video? Our numbers have just been decimated recently because we did the uh, COVID journals uh, a year or so ago, and our numbers have been so low. I really wanna rebuild this YouTube channel, but I need your help. So if you could do anything, click on all the little buttons, subscribe, notification, like, whatever. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.